432. This is the April 11th, 2024. 432 Fire Station Building Committee on the city's Zoom web platform. Chair statement is this meeting is being re recorded, videotaped, and if any persons present are doing so, they must notify the chair at this time. Is anyone doing that out there that wants to tell me about it? Don't hear of anybody. Let's jump to attendance. David Singer. Present. Hawkins is present. Mayor. We'll jump on. Chief. He's having some trouble getting on, but he should be on momentarily. He's working at it. Okay. Diana. No. Carol Collins is here. Hi, Carol. Uh, David Mascaratello. Nope. Steve uh, Draculich is on vacation. Um, Amy McMahon. Here. I'm here. And thank you, Amy. Jen. Here. And Jim Wynn. He looks like he's on. And the chief just got in. Chief present. Oh, and I think the mayor is just getting on too. Okay, I'll wait one second. Being the list here. Oh, Bob's saying. Chief, say you're present. Well, hello, present. Hello, there you go. Mayor, are you there? I'm here, here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, non voting members, Marla Warner, Fernando, present. Curry. Thank you. Pete MacGyver. I am present. I am present. Greg Diefendorf. Neil Joyce is present. OPM. Yes. Roger Holt is present. Katrina is present. Yes. Anyone else? Uh, it looked like well, Keith Barnacle jumped on. Okay. I had a technical difficulty. Okay. Um, we, we didn't get the minutes, did we? I didn't see them. I apologize. I didn't get them together on time. Okay. Move the minutes to the next meeting. Okay, the budget update. Payment invoices and current budget status. Neil, I've already made you the post. Oh, oh guy. Okay. Um, I will do the payment letters first, if that's all right. Yep. Everybody see that? Uh, invoices do. this month for services provided and were completed during March 2024. From D.A. Sullivan in the amount of $208,591.63. CMS in the amount of $24,000. Box Modular, again, the lease on the temporary offices, uh, $8,437. And Pachico Ross, $23,467.75. For a total of two hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred and ninety-six dollars and thirty-eight cents. Any questions on invoices submitted this period? Hearing none. Is there a motion? Go ahead, Butch. Was there a question? No. Is there a motion to accept as presented the invoices for payment? Singer, so moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. Sure, I'll give you a second. Carol. Is there any further discussion on the invoices? 
Anything anybody wants to chat about or any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? David Singer? Yes. Oh, yes. But Hawkins, yes. Mayor? Yes. Chief? Yes. Diana, are you on at all? Carol? Yes. Mm -hmm. Dean Wall? Yes. Uh, Amy? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jim? Thank you. Um, Neil, you're up on the budget. Okay. Very good. Um, reflective of those invoices, uh, just read into the record. Um, on the screen now, you will see uh, our budget update where we stand to date. Um, as we noted last time, we're getting very close on uh, balance of OPM contract as well as the balance of the architect's contract. I believe um, based on the extensions previously provided by the city that we are uh, through the uh, period of time that was reflected in those agreements. And we're now essentially in a time of materials mode. Uh, for continuation of our services on the project. Um, that those that applies both to uh, CMS and to uh, Pacheco Ross. Uh, commissioning um, work is ongoing. Um, we just had a very productive uh, meeting in, um, in Greenfield on Tuesday. Commissioning services are, are expected to kick off in the next week or so as equipment is turned on and powered up. Um, so we would expect we'll see a significant drawdown on their services uh, through April and into early May. Uh, construction work at the station again is continuing. They're roughly 89% complete on revenue. Um, as anybody has, if, been, if they've been through the building recently, they're probably much further along than that on work in place. Again, we have a good budget left over for project expenses and not anticipating um, expending many of these items um, as we move forward. So that's a pot of money that we'll have to reallocate to contingency as, as we move forward. Furniture and equipment is moving along as well as technology. Um, work in the temporary station, again, winding down, getting close to um, closing that up and um, dismantling it for removal and still sitting on roughly $285,000 in contingency within the project. So total expenditures are totaling out just shy of 18.4 million. We've got roughly 3.3 million left um, to expend, and we're just shy of 85% complete on um, expenditures for the project. Happy to take any questions related to the budget. Neil, can you just back up and explain how we've come off of sort of contract expenses and um, and now slid over to time and material expenses? So as, um, it, as when, it relates to the process. Yep. When we when we um, uh, negotiated our extensions. Our fixed price extensions were good through the end of March. We were anticipating that we would be closer to the beginning of April for um, energization and um, startups and, and move-ins would be contemplated within the first couple of weeks in April. It looks like we're about two to three weeks behind that time frame. We're currently targeting um, move in in mid May, and we had um, the distinct honor of Eversource's presence on site last week when they um, dropped the transformer, installed the CTs, and energized the building on permanent power. So that was a very important milestone. Um, and that's currently where things stand. Thanks. Any, any other questions for Neil on the budget or where we're at here in the process?
Okay. So the motion to accept the budget is presented. So moved, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Is there a second? Second, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Any, anyone have any anything else they would like to bring up on the budget? No? Okay, all those in favor, David Singer? Yes. Butch Hawkins, yes. Mayor? Yes. Chief? Yes. Uh, Carol Collins? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Jean? Yes. Paul? Amy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. And Jim. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is uh, change order updates. Um, that, Neil, I don't think you have any, but um, I, there may I, be right some now, questions I, about the change orders. So. Right now, I do not have any new change orders to present to the committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and we are uh, awaiting return of the signed change orders from the city that were voted and approved at last month's meeting. Right. Mayor, you, you had some questions? I, I signed all of them but one. I had a question about the EV charger that I emailed to you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, because... I didn't sign that one yet. I think it's for two thousand seven hundred dollars. Yes, or approximately thereof. But the cord to plug that in is going to go across the sidewalk. So, architecturally, I was afraid somebody would fall. Okay, it crosses the sidewalk. Sure. Um. I don't know, somebody, Katrina, or? I'll try to answer. Um, okay. I know that when the discussion was being held about uh, the number of chargers uh, be right before installation uh, and their location, uh, the location, I wasn't present for the discussion, but I see the paperwork that shows it moving from where the curb edge or I should say the sidewalk edges uh, next to the pavement to away from the pavement. Um, again, my recollection is that uh, it was moved partially to avoid being hit by cars because there were not bollards uh, placed there. If it was right at the edge of the parking that it would could potentially be hit. And again, I was not present for that conversation, but uh, that appears to be what led to its placement. Um, Katrina, uh, can we revisit it maybe and get a price for, because um, it is obviously a safety hazard, um, stretching cords across the sidewalk there. Um, maybe can we revisit it with the um, civil engineering group and kind of come up with a solution and maybe have it for uh, next month's meeting? Sure. Um, I know that this is going to end up costing. It's already costed. Um, but at least I think it'll be an answer for the mayors. That's what you're looking for, aren't you, Mayor? An answer for the safety yes, part I'm of the issue. Yes, I'm sorry to bring it up. No, that's okay. That's fine. No, no, no. It's it's best that you bring things up, uh, especially like this. Bring that up now. Um, so we will reach out to civil. Uh, and involve the contractor, obviously, in uh, getting pricing for that. So I, I would, I would like to just raise that the change order for the twenty seven hundred dollars in question is not going to go away as a result of this relocation. So I would ask that the city take another look at the change order, recognize that that is for work that was done many months ago and um, is not, it's not gonna go away. It still has to get executed in my opinion. And it's the contractor still needs to be paid for the additional work that he did thus far. Right, yeah, that, that definitely needs to be um, signed off well, and paid for. And the change coming up, um, you know, we'll deal with. Does that, 
Does that satisfy uh, your question, Mayor? Well, well taken. The, the city, that's me. I'll sign that and send it in. I had a question about it. So I held it, but um, that's fine. I'll, I'll mail it in. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Butch, for explaining that. Um, any other questions relating to, you know, the change orders, the past change orders that we've done? I think Carol has a question. Like yeah, if, if I may. And uh, I know, Katrina, you and I had been in touch. Uh, it was the end of August. And um, the email I have, and it sounds like maybe there was some discussion, but that the there were two EV chargers for a total of four plugs that was included in the contract. So I was just curious. I mean, I know it's not a lot of money, but um, as to how it became one and, and a change order that we, oh, I see the chief hand up. We get a credit on that, didn't we, Neil, for reducing it? Uh, we agreed that the infrastructure had already been installed and the EV charger would be turned over to the city at the conclusion of the project. Yep. So there was no credit that was provided. Well, um, in the library project, it, it was the same, that there were two chargers installed. It was part of the project, and then they were turned over to the city, but there was no fee uh, or change order. So uh, it's okay. I see that again. I don't know if Butch needs to recognize the chief, but he he had his hand up. Oh, I can't see him. Yeah, go ahead, chief. Yeah. So simply, uh, back uh, um, I think around October, November, uh, when we were taking a look at the site plans and trying to figure out um, and fine tune parking on site, uh, the, between the um, ADA compliant parking spaces and those four parking spaces, that equi equivalent of uh, up to six to eight parking spaces. Uh, and we just simply couldn't afford to dedicate four of those spots uh, to that between the, the on-duty staff, the administrative staff, we just ran out of parking spaces. Um, so um, at the time, it was a, an agreement with the mayor and the building committee to reduce it down to, and not the building committee, the construction crew to reduce it down to, um, reduce it down to one, which gives us two AV spots. There just simply isn't enough parking for four of them to be dedicated all the time uh, and not have other vehicles be able to park there. That's why the decision was made. Okay. Good, that good, Carol? Sure, yep, thank you. Okay, Any, anyone else? No? Okay. So, project update and design, um, either Neil or Katrina, where we're at, how close we're getting. Very Talk close. About the target date, some more. Yep, I'll, I'll take a crack at it. Um, as I had mentioned before, in the last week or so, maybe maybe week and a half, the project reached a very important milestone. Um, we had the transformer dropped on site and the permanent um, long-awaited electrical switch gear and permanent electric service was provided to the building. Over the last week and a half or so, um, we've gone through the painstakingly slow process of energizing each and every circuit in the building, as well as verifying power to all of the uh, rooftop units and HVAC equipment that's been installed to date. We are still awaiting the arrival of the permanent generator. Right now we have a temporary generator on site. Um, the automatic transfer switch that energizes the generator in the event of a loss of power was expected to be delivered at the end of this week on site. That will be installed. The permanent generator is scheduled to ship at the end of, or I think it was the 22nd of April. So we're expecting that's gonna land on site uh, right around May 1st. 
We're allowing two weeks to have the generator set, energized, and tested. And then we're planning a mid-May occupancy at the fire station, at the new station. And then that will give us about six weeks to dismantle the old station and get it ready as the lease agreements terminate around the 1st of July for those structures, both the apparatus bay and the old offices. So what should we be doing uh, now or in the next week or two about starting to decommission the uh, the temporary? I mean, we obviously will need lead time to start to get that up and going. Yeah, so I mean, the the building is available the new building is available for storage records, anything that doesn't need to remain in the temporary station could certainly be brought over. Um, I would not advise any occupancy in the new building until we have the acceptance of the city and the building inspector. Um, fire alarm testing and whatnot has not yet been completed, life safety devices are in place but not tested or programmed so we've still got some work to do in the building all of which we couldn't do uh, prior to energizing and having permanent power available so a um, lot of loose ends will be buttoned up over the next several weeks and as a, as i said before everyone seems to be green lighted and uh, supportive of a move in mid-may any anybody questions for Neil on any of the process currently or in the near future or Katrina? Yeah, David. Um, so uh, when do we think we could do a ribbon cutting? Let's be pos. Let's think positively. For sure. David, are you directing that question to me or or to the <laughs> committee in general? Well, I actually see about 10 people. So anybody who wants to answer. <laughs> I know the mayor's here, so I would certainly give her the first uh, opportunity. Got it. Well, we want to get the paving. When's the paving and, and that yeah. other stuff going to be completed? Say, paving, paving and landscaping is supposed to be finished up towards the end of April. Um, obviously, some of that is weather dependent. If this rain never stops, <laughs> we'll never get paved. Um, but we're anticipating, I think pavement is scheduled for the week of the 22nd. Landscaping was supposed to be done before that. So, I mean, if if the intent is to uh, have a ribbon cutting at the station in early May before occupancy, then that would be an appropriate schedule. If the intention is to wait until after occupancy when everything is in um, and the trucks occupy the apparatus bays and whatnot, then it would be late May, early June. And I think that's really a city um, a city matter to confirm. Chief, any sure. any any thoughts about that, Chief? Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> so some of the some of the loose items, if you will, um, are not going to get moved until we actually move. Uh, so there'll be like blank spots on walls where TVs or, or other things need to go um, because some of the stuff gets moved with us. Other than that, I don't really think it matters to us um, when we have it. Uh, it's just like I said, you know, when we actually do the physical move, the rest of the loose equipment and stuff that we have here goes with us. So there may be some void spots, if you will. Katrina had her hand up too. Katrina, did you want to respond? Uh, yes, just a, a matter of consideration. Uh, if the intent at a ribbon cutting is to follow it with tours, then life safety issues, all of that needs to be addressed. So uh, just thinking about the nature of the ceremony, whether it's something that's completely held outside uh, and there's no tour afterwards, that could happen at any point uh, in May, I would guess. But uh, to 
to have people come into the station and this is another kind of consideration for the chief you know if they're in there and they're operating that's one thing if they're not quite in there and the life safety isn't in there it is a matter of timing it's it's a tough one to call yeah i would think they want to be in there and operational um my sounds, take on it but sounds like june would probably be a good place to yeah leave. i would yeah Okay. That that sound about right, Neil. June, sure. First of June should be all in, up and running, and everything's pretty much completed. Right. Thank you. Might even yeah. have some grass by then, Butch. Yeah. The turf management place. <laughs> Anybody else with any? I can't see you all. So if you have a question, please say so. I think that sounds good. Early June. Yeah. It sounds like you're moving right along with everything and I'll do my part to make sure it's a sunny day. There you go. <laughs> Mayor, I can assure you and, and to the other members of the committee, we're we're pushing as hard as we possibly can to get everybody across the finish line. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So if I if I could, Butch, I'll give a little update on where we are with with the the task of trying to move. Um, if everybody remembers, we took a, a building that had you know eighty six years worth of stuff and divided into three or four different locations with the city. One of them being the old library. I'm happy to report, with the exception of one item, uh, the crews uh, have taken everything out of the library and brought it to the new firehouse. So that's all our paper storage. Uh, we have uh, filed away all the old incident reports from 1890 up until today, uh, and all the day sheets and everything else that we're required to keep for life. Um, uh, Michael Cache, one of my firefighters, was really the one that spearheaded that with a bunch of other uh, firefighters. Uh, they've worked a couple weeks to clear that out and it has been cleared out. Um, as far as as far as the rest of the firehouse goes, we have uh, worked uh, pretty hard to clean out one of the Connex trailers on site. Um, we're working on getting the second one cleared out so that can go to the DPW yard uh, in anticipation for all of the stuff that's in the, the temporary, the, the wiring, the plumbing and all the stuff that the city put in that when we take it down, they'll have a place to store it so they can reuse it down the road. So that's in process. Uh, and then the rest of it is just equipment that we don't need day to day. We're starting to pack up. Uh, as soon as I can get the shelvings uh, in place in some of the storage areas, uh, we'll start moving some of the that loose equipment that we don't use every day. I would like to say that I do appreciate um, DA Sullivan's efforts in allowing us to um, get some of the stuff down there ahead of time. Uh, uh, this move is very, very complicated. It was complicated when we moved the first time. It's less complicated, but it is still uh, uh, a dance, if you will, um, to do this and to do it uh, and get it done within the time frame Neil was talking about. Uh, and we are working hard to make sure that we are accommodating everybody's needs and concerns with that. Very good. Any questions for the chief on any of that? None. Okay. I have the next meeting scheduled for Thursday, May 9th. With that, we'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved, Singer. Second. Second. All those in favor, I vote yes. David? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Chief? Yes. Carol? Yes. Dean? Yes. Amy? Yes. And Jen? Yes. And Jim? Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>